Good morning. This is Sarah Satch, and it's time for our live video chat. And just in case you don't know, every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time, because I'm in Colorado, we do a live video chat. I try to answer questions that I've received through the week and ones that I have received through email and try to answer those questions. Try to keep them clean and about yarn and crochet, though. <laughs> Good morning, Elizabeth. And also, I try to answer questions like today. We're going to be discussing part two of how to read a yarn label. Now, <clears throat> you'll notice I've got my great big cup today. I woke up with a sinus headache, and so I'm needing a big cup of coffee. <laughs> All right, so we have a lot of things to talk about today. We have a couple of new patterns, um, some new yarn, and we also are going to uh, kind of repeat a little bit about what we talked about last week and then uh, go on into reading some of the symbols that are on your yarn labels. So let's go ahead and get to it. <laughs> don't forget, if you've got your coffee with you, clink in. Good morning, Mel. It's good to see you. Let's go ahead and get into our discussion about how to read a yarn label. Remember last week when I was talking to you about on the Red Heart yarn that has this little symbol here, and it tells you, you you can pull on the outside or the inside, and then I pulled that little piece of yarn out. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that happened. Well, I figured it out. I've got it all figured out how to pull it out of the center. <laughs> that was so funny. But anyway, we've been using this ombre yarn from Red Heart just because the label's nice and big. Okay, so let's go ahead and review it just a little bit. Of course, here's the picture I showed you last week. And we talked about all of this stuff, the yards and the weights, the ounces, and what this is. Of course, that's a pattern that's on the inside. And then we talked about, I'm just going to toss that down there. Then we talked about this label and how important that lot number is. Now, now remember, not all yarns have a lot number. Only those yarns that are dyed. Some of the Red Heart yarns uh, that are acrylic don't go through that dyeing process and the colors put in a different way. And so there isn't a lot number. But make sure you always check it. Good morning, Rosie. Glad you're here. I love your name because that's my dog's name. <laughs> Anyway, so that lot number is important, and here's your, your name of your yarn. And remember, with most yarns, you're going to get a brand name, which is your Red Heart. You're going to get a style name, which is Super Saver. And then your type is your Ombre. And then you're going to get a color as well, which this one is True Blue. So remember, when you're searching on Google looking for different yarns, to get all those extra things in there. And of course, here I showed you a picture of the label all printed out. We talked about a lot of stuff. And remember, this picture usually is the pattern that's written on the inside of the label. And most of the yarn companies will do that. Unless you're buying it from a, you know, a specialized, like, a hand dyer that does alpaca or wool or something. They don't, they don't usually do that. You'll just find the label on those. But that's, we're basically talking about the yarns that you buy in your store. You know, your, uh... Red Heart, your Lion brand, and of course Hobby Lobby has their own brand, Michaels has their own brand, Joann's has their own brand, and most of those have people that write patterns for them, and you'll find them on the inside of the pattern, and you'll usually see a little thing like this that shows you what that's going to look like when you work it up a certain way, and it's a good idea to look at that because it gives you an idea of what that yarn's going to look like when it's all stitched up. Okay, so today we're going to go just a little bit farther in our discussion. Good morning, Shirley of how to read a yarn label. And so these are the three symbols we're going to talk about today. Now this symbol here is your yarn weight. And you should find that on most of your yarns, whether they're hand dyed or uh, manufactured through a company. I'm going to show you another chart here real quick. And you'll see this is the standard weights. It goes from Number seven, which is a new is a new classification because a lot of the yarns have come out with those great big jumbos. And so the number seven is a new classification. It used to go from zero lace 
up to your super bulky but now it goes up to a seven jumbo and it's a good idea to get a little bit of an understanding of what all of these symbols mean now if you want to look at it good morning debbie if you want to look at it on the blog good morning sarah of course i like your name because my name is sarah <laughs> It, like I was saying, if you want a good idea, uh, you know, to get used to seeing this chart on the blog, I always write a blog about my live video. And I'll, when I when I put this out there, you can just click on that and it'll have these charts on there for you as well. Also, you can always go to the Crochet Guild of America or any of the yarn brands like Red Heart, Lion Brand, like I was saying, they'll all have those charts as well. And it's a good idea to get familiar with with all of the numbers and what they represent and lace yarn you can see it's a zero and then it goes all the way up like i said to jumbo and before the charts used to only go up to super bulky but since they came out with that great big thick stuff they made a new classification see these yarn companies want to make us happy because they want us to buy their yarns <laughs> good morning diane glad you're here so anyway, that's the, that's the chart, and every yarn label is going to have that on there. Let me pick this one up, the one that we're looking at, and you can see right here, it's a number four. Number four, number three are my favorite yarns to work with, and actually I love the chunkier the yarn, the better, because I like using those great big crochet hooks and whipping something out really, really fast, and so I like the chunky ones. I don't really care for the really thin uh, zero lace weight, only because the crochet hooks get tinier and tinier and I don't like the little tiny ones. I used to do a lot of cross stitch and I can't do that anymore because my hands just can't handle those teeny tiny needles anymore. Okay, so that's what that first square is talking about. When you see a square like this, it usually will have a yarn skein. A lot of people call them skeins. I grew up calling them skeins, so I'm just going to call them skeins and if I'm wrong, it's okay. You know what I'm talking about. I'm from the South. We say things weird. <laughs> but that's your yarn weight. Okay, so what do these two mean? Look a little weird, don't they? Well, if you'll notice in the center of this one, there's a crochet hook. And it says, for this particular yarn, which is a six super bulky, they're telling you that this yarn works at best with a K105, which is a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and then on the outside it says nine single crochets by 12 rows will get you a four by four inch or 10 by 10 centimeters crochet swatch so what's a swatch right well I just worked a simple one up this one is not for this yarn but you work up a, a swatch like this and if you want to know how this particular yarn is going to work, you'll do what they say, however many single crochets across for as, abs, for as many rows down. Hello, Don. I'm glad to see you here. All right, so let's look back at our ombre that we're looking at. All right, I'm going to pop on my glasses because they decided to make this symbol really tiny. Okay, so this one says you're going to need a J hook, which is a nine. And it is a 5.5 millimeter. And to get a 4 by 4 inch square, you're going to need to do 12 single crochets by 15 rows. I'm going to bring it way up close if you can see that. Right there. And so each one uh, skein, most skeins, and of course, if you're, and again, I always reference this, if you're getting yarn from someone who does it individually, you know, a crafter yarn or whatever that they've dyed themselves or something that may not be on there and that's where a few videos back when I talked about how to measure it on a ruler how many wraps per inch you can figure that out by doing that as well and uh, that's a I think it's a couple weeks back that we talked about that and what that does is it makes a nice square and you can decide if you want to use that hook that it calls for if it makes the size that you want Okay, so that's for crochet. The other symbol on there, oh, I thought I had it upside down for a second. <laughs> it was upside down to me. This other square here in the middle, you'll see there's a set of knitting needles. And it says 10 US 6 millimeter. That's if you want to knit up a, squ a squash. 
I guess you could knit up a squash if you wanted to. <laughs> no, it's if you want to knit up a swatch. <laughs> and you can see it says you're going to cast on 10 stitches and you're going to knit 14 rows. And then you'll get a 4x4 four four inch swatch or a 10x10 or a 10 10 inch centimeter. And let me show you, I knitted one up real quick just to kind of give you an idea. You just cast on however many stitches that it says, and then you knit however many rows. It's the same way with the crochet one. You're, it's just if you're going to knit this particular yarn, instead of crochet it, it tells you how big it will look. And you can knit that up, and you can also measure it. And you can see, well, if this isn't going to work for my project, I may need to use bigger knitting needles, or I may need to use smaller needle, knitting needles, or cast on more, or do more rows. It's just a guide to help you. Now, let me give you a little secret that don't tell anybody. <laughs> I rarely ever make a crochet swatch. I usually just do a couple of rows, unless it's a brand new stitch I'm trying. If it's a brand new stitch I'm trying and I'm trying to learn it, then I'll usually do a swatch or two to see how it's going to work out. But and when I knit, I always do a swatch. For some reason, it's the weirdest thing. I crochet loosely, as some would say I am a loose hooker. <laughs> I always crochet loosely, but when it comes to knitting, I always knit tightly. I don't know what that's about. It's just, you know... It's just me being little weird me. <laughs> but that's where <laughs> the swatch really comes in handy. So when you're looking at yarns, three things to remember. Um, uh, next week we're going to talk about the rest of the symbols because those have more to do with the care of the yarn and the, pro and the project when you get it done. So today we're just talking about these three. You have the weight of your yarn. You have how to, uh, what needles you're going to need for knitting and how to make a swatch. And on this one, you have what crochet hook you're going to need and how to make a swatch. So although these, although these look like they're in the, you know, a different language or something, they're really not. And everything that's on that label is there to help you because crochet manufacturers want us to buy their products. <laughs> and of course, it's a guide. If yours comes out bigger or smaller, whether you're knitting or crocheting, it helps you know if what you're doing is going to work. Okay? Don't tell anybody I rarely make a crochet swatch, so I don't want anyone to know. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, now, like I said, this chart and this chart both are on the blog, and it just it's just live video chat, uh, part two, how to read a yarn label. Now, next week... We're going to talk about all the rest of these that are on here and what these mean and why they're on there and why they're important. And they really are important. Okay? If you want to understand, uh, if you want to see last week's video, I'm going to put it up there. I'll put it up in the um, corner. I think it might be that side or that side. I can't remember. But I'll put the link up there so you can click on it. And you, if you missed last week's, you can see just the beginning introduction of how to read a yarn label. All right, and that's all I have for the yarn label, but I've got a lot of other things to talk to you about. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is new yarn. Well, I went into Michael's because I'm working on, I'm using their new Baby Cakes uh, yarn inspirations um, by Karen called Baby Cakes Making Some Blankets. And I went, I'll show you, I'll show you that in just a second. But I went in there and I noticed that like the two end caps were completely empty. And so I asked the lady, I said, where's all the Karen cakes? And she said, well, we're putting all the basic Karen cakes into the side. And they're resetting their yarn. And they were all in there. And then I turned and I noticed on one side, they had this new yarn. And it is adorable. This is called Karen Cupcakes. <laughs> is that hilarious? It is, I think, it, let me pop on my glasses. Let me see how many ounces is in here. This has three ounces, and it's supposed to be enough to make a nice hat. I thought it would work great for a dog sweater, but, you know, you never know. It is a number three, so you're probably going to have to use a smaller hook. Let's see what this one says that you need. See, here's the label. We've got our number three here. And then the crochet hook says 
Can you see it? It's so tiny. It's calling for a G, which is what I expected for a number three. Anyway, I bought two because I want to test them out, see how they're how they're, what they're like. And there's a picture of one there that they that one is, I think, let's see, that's crocheted up. Yep. Yeah. I think this one had one that was knit up on it. And so that's the pattern that's inside. So you can follow their pattern or you can do your own thing. Of course, you know I always do my own thing. <laughs> anyway, that's some new yarn. Well, I also, I was talking to the lady because at Michael's and Hobby Lobby here in Parker, they know me and so they're always chatting with me. At Hobby Lobby, they call me the yarn lady. So anyway, I was asking the lady, I said, what's going on these other end caps? And she said, well, there's some more, uh, what they're calling big cakes from Karen Cakes. At Yarn Inspirations, Karen Cakes. One of them she called, I want to say Sprinkles. I've forgotten now, but there's two kinds, and I can't wait to see them. One of them looked like it was a chunkier, and one of them looked like it was uh, had sprinkles going through it. Oh, man, I'm going to have to look it up now, but I'm real excited to try it out because, you know, I don't have enough yarn, right? <laughs> okay. So that's new yarn for this week. Now, a couple of new items that we have going on is this is the blanket that I made. It's just called my Sweet Baby Blanket. And I made one like this for a friend. Uh, let me grab the baby. I stuck her over here. Because her she was having a new baby, and her son was struggling, because he was like four or five, I can't remember, with getting a new baby brother or sister. And so she wanted me to make just a stuffy. And so this is a free pattern on my blog. I haven't made a video of this yet. But it goes with this blanket here. And so it fits for like a regular size baby blanket. It's a 24 by 24. But you can make it bigger or smaller. So this is just made with basic yellow and blue number four baby yarn. Okay, so I got some of the new Karen baby cakes. And I made this. And I am in love with this yarn. It's the same pattern. I just did the whole thing using... Uh, it takes about seven ounces, which is about one and a half, and which is kind of cool because I'm going to try to incorporate the second ha half of that into making the uh, another baby so I can do a video of it, like, like this baby here for you. I also have a little bunting thing that goes with this set, and I'll hopefully get that pattern out and ready to go. But that's what, what I did this week. And then yesterday, I, or it was actually a couple of weeks ago, I had someone contact me about the, it's the Purple Baby Hat Project, and it has another name like Click for the Babies or Click for Babies, and um, I have it on my blog, and I, and I had a pattern I already had, and a lady contacted me, asked me if I had a really easy Purple Baby Hat pattern, and I do. And this is the one I put out there yesterday. It's super simple. It's just... <clears throat> rows of half double crochet and then you're stitching in the back loop only and you just make it out flat you stitch it together in a tube and then you gather the top you know because for the project they don't want anything with like big buttons or bows or pom-poms or anything they just want basic purple baby hats and what this is is it's uh, to make awareness for ba um, shaken baby syndrome and child abuse and i actually didn't even know what shaken baby syndrome was until I investigated and did some research. And if you go to that blog, if you go to, this is already on YouTube, you can go there. It's on Ravelry, it's also on the blog. But if you go to the blog, it gives you a link where you can go to and learn about the project. I, I think it's called Click for Babies, actually. But it's a neat project. And this pattern, I made it in five sizes. So you've got a newborn, you've got a three month, you've got a six month, you have a 12 month and a 24 month. And let me tell you, the 24 month fits my head. So <laughs> if you need it any bigger than that, because these, this pattern is really, really stretchy. And so it will work for just, I mean, any size child. And it's a great project. And it's a great thing. If you've got some purple yarn that's like Red Heart with Love or Red Heart Soft, Karen Simply Soft, or any of the softer Worsted Weight Number 4 yarns, you can whip a bunch of these up. And, and if you go to that blog... Um, it'll it, and click on the link. It'll tell you where to send them because they're, they're, and it'll also give you the, the guidelines and what you can and can't do because they're really particular. You know, the main thing is they just don't want stuff on it that babies can reach and pull into their mouth, basically. So anyway, it's a really good project. It's a really good um, thing uh, to get involved in. So 
We talked about yarn labels, we talked about new yarn, and we talked about this week's projects. And I have more things coming, don't forget. Next month is September, and our four, uh, uh, not four inch, six inch square is going to be the September Sapphire. And I've, I've got some sketches going. I've already got uh, a good idea of what that square is going to be. And don't forget, you'll have 12 squares, one for each month, with the birthstone of that month as inspiration. And then after, no, uh, after December, when we have 12 squares, we're going to, in January, have a project to put those 12 squares together. And I've already worked up um, the pattern. I'm not going to give you any hints at what it is. I am going to tell you this. It's not a blanket. It's not an afghan. It's not a lapgan. It's not any of, any of those things. Okay, so are you ready to hear about the giveaway? So, remember a few months back I said, when we reach 10,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, we were going to have a giveaway. Well, we did. Woo, 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 woo. I don't have any streamers or anything. <laughs> well, we did reach 10,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. And I'm really excited about it because my channel is completely different than other people's. And sometimes because I'm different and I try to do weird and different things and not always just basic, here's a pattern, it's free, have fun, you know. I try to do some weird and different things. And that's okay. I don't mind being weird and different. <laughs> And so um, I, I investigated in doing gift cards, but the problem is my YouTube channel reaches internationally. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to choose, I may have my granddaughter do it tomorrow or Thursday. I'm going to uh, have my granddaughter on Thursday, so I think maybe I'll just have her pick some names. And you can, uh, if you want to win, I'm going to have three prizes. <clears throat> I'm going to have a first, a second, and a third place winner. The first place winner is going to get six free of my paid patterns. The second place winner is going to get four of my, they'll get them for free of my paid patterns. And then the first place, or the third place winner will get two free of my paid patterns. Now, you know I have free patterns and I have paid patterns. The paid patterns, are, you can go to Ravelry. You can put in Posh Pooch Designs. Or you can put in Sarah Satch, S-A-R-A-S-A-C-H, and you can find my Ravelry shop. Um, if at the, when you go to my Ravelry shop, um, yes, I have tons of free patterns in there, but I also have a lot of paid patterns. So pick when if your name is picked, um, I will put that name. Um, the names will be picked from either the Google video or the Red Heart or. Either the Google video or the video here on Facebook. So we'll pick three winners. And then one, once the winners are chosen, um, I'll, I'll tell you your winner and then you can email me. And then I can, but when you email me, then I'll have your email address. And then I'll send those to you. You can tell me your choices. And then I'll send those to you through Ravelry. And I like using Ravelry because you can save them in your Ravelry library and you will never lose them. And that's the key. Don't just save them in like Hardem or whatever. Put them in your Ravelry library and they will be saved forever. Okay? So let me repeat that. We're going to have three winners. The first place winner gets uh, six free of my paid patterns. The second place winner gets four free of my paid patterns. And the third place winner gets two free of my paid patterns. And um, we'll just, just comment here or comment on the Google when I get it over there on my YouTube channel. And we'll pick those three winners and maybe some more. If we get a lot of comments, I'll pick more. I love giving away patterns. And so anyway, that's what we're going to do. And it is very exciting to me. Because I have to, to tell you this, is when I first started doing this, I told my husband that I wanted to have a 1,000 subscribers by Christmas. And that was last year. And at Christmas time, I had over 5,000. I was like, how does this happen? It's so much fun. Because in reality, I'm doing this just for a lot of fun. And just so I can share with you some things that I've learned along the way. And maybe you can learn some things and share those on too. So anyway, make sure you comment either here on Facebook or uh, here on YouTube. 
and names will be chosen from those two places and they'll be chosen randomly by my granddaughter. I have her on Thursday and I'm just going to let her pick some names. Maybe I'll choose more. Well, thanks for tuning in today with our live video chat. I always have a fun time talking with you and showing you new things. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And don't forget to comment. See you next week.